to meet you. I Thank hope you. we don't uh, Like create encounters, like create social situations, like create objects, like create structures, because I'm taking into account everything that's around me. Michael is an artist who deals with healing. He deals with the recovery of material that has been destroyed or lost. In Iraqi Arabic, one of the things that you say when somebody cooks a delicious meal is you say, Asha Tidich, which means bless your hands. Asha Tidich. Asha Tidich. <laughs> 2020 Nasher Prize laureate Michael Rakowitz and Jin Ya Wang, founder of Break Bread Break Borders, discuss food, hospitality, and community based art during a time of social distancing as the Nasher Prize Dialogues return December 9th. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Jeremy Strick, director of the Nasher Sculpture Center. I'd like to invite, welcome you to this evening's Nasher Prize Dialogues conversation with Nasher Prize laureate Michael Rakowitz and artist Jin Ya Huang, founder of Break Bread, Break Borders. This has been a challenging time to say the least and in so many ways, but for me, one memory of a pre-pandemic event still casts a kind of warm glow even through the darkest times. Uh, this was an event held uh, one uh, 10 months ago to the day uh, here in Dallas, a community barbecue organized by the Nasher in collaboration with Break Bread, Break Borders and Farm, Farmers Assisting uh, Returning Military uh, with the collaboration and support and inspiration of Michael Rakowitz. Uh, over the course of the day, uh, extraordinary meal was served, uh, inspired by Michael's cooking uh, and prepared by Michael with uh, Break Bread, Break Borders. There was music, there was dancing, uh, and uh, it was as diverse uh, an audience, a group of participants as I've seen in Dallas. Uh, and throughout, there was, a, there was a spirit of joy that pervaded uh, and uh, fellowship. So that memory has held me in good stead uh, and it inspired this evening's conversation. Uh, Jinwan and Michael, uh, as artists, share many things in common, uh, which I hope they might explore this evening, uh, and uh, among which are certainly uh, an interest in, in the role food and the preparation and serving of meals uh, plays in art. So we'll hear about their respective practices we might hear as well about uh, how they've responded in the, over the past 10 months uh, to the conditions of the pandemic. Uh, I'd like to thank the, the sponsors of our National Prize Dialogues program. Uh, those are the Hartland and Mackey family, uh, Janelle and Alden Pinnell and the Pinnell Foundation, and Kristen and Derek Wilson. Uh, I'd also like to thank our Nasher Prize co-chairs, uh, Nancy Carlson and Adriana Parales. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, our Nasher curator, Catherine Kraft, uh, for uh, steering this conversation. So uh, without further ado, uh, I'll turn the screen over to Catherine. Thank you, Jeremy. Welcome, everyone to our conversation with Michael and Jin Yao. Uh, for a brief introduction before beginning our conversation, uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit more about our speakers. Michael Rakowitz is an Iraqi American sculptor, a conceptual artist, and the 2020 recipient of the Nasher Prize. His retrospective opened at the Whitechapel Gallery in London uh, last year, and this year, has traveled to the Castello di Rivoli in Turin and the Jamal Art Center in Dubai, where it just closed last month. Uh, one facet of Michael's many faceted uh, body of work, of course, involves the preparation and sharing of food. Uh, as part of his project, Enemy Kitchen, for example, he has taught his mother's Iraqi recipes to school children and started a food truck in which U.S. military veterans served food cooked by Iraqis that the practice of cooking together and sharing a meal with one another can be part of a social practice of art is a conviction shared by our other guest, 
Virginia Huang. Uh, she is an artist and the founder of Break Bread, Break Borders of Dallas, uh, which she has described as a catering company with a cause. Uh, she started Break Bread, Break Borders after the death of her mother, a chef, restaurateur, and community leader. And it serves to economically empower refugee women from Iraq, Syria, and other countries uh, to help them cook for a living. Uh, when they cater a meal, they don't just drop off the food, they converse and share their stories. In addition, this year, Jinya was named one of 60 scholars invited to participate in the Presidential Leadership Scholars Program. Uh, I was fortunate enough to be present that beautiful day in February uh, that gave us a delicious uh, and enjoyable community meal uh, that you just saw in the video uh, running before the program. Uh, I believe that was the last time uh, that weekend was the last time we saw each other in person. Uh, so what I'd like to do this evening is um, start by just asking both of you how you're doing, but then also hopefully give you the opportunity to talk with one another uh, as you've also not been able to um, see each other since. So, Michael, Jinya, welcome. And how are you? Hang in there. <laughs> <laughs> you, Michael? Yeah, doing the same. Doing the same. Um, it's, it's wonderful to be with you, you know, here today, wherever that here is. Um, and, you know, Catherine and and Jeremy and and everyone at the Nasher, thank you so much for for making this happen. And Jinya, it's such a pleasure to be with you again in uh, conversation. Um, we're also joined, um, you know, by Naura Shakar and uh, Hulud Sultan, who work with Jinya, um, who we'll hear from as well. So, to them, I want to say uh, in Iraqi, Shaku Maku. Uh, and also, um, but uh, Jinya, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I look back on that that day in February, um, almost with uh, you know having this this meaning that we didn't know what it was going to have at the time. We knew what we were doing was was. Um, was exciting and and it was about gathering and it was about all all the kind of bittersweet notions of what it means to host and that 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 intersection between hospitality and hostility mm -hmm. um but i didn't know you know that it was going to be you know the the last moment when i was able to be with people like they were like right. they were family yeah yeah yeah, it's it was such an honor to be able to um, to come to that 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 intersection, as you said, you know, inviting just such a diverse crowd and and just how inclusive the whole well, hello, international barbecue, <laughs> you know what it was, and, um, and the ladies at Break 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 Borders, our community cooks, had such an incredible time um, cooking for, for people from the Iraqi, the Syrian, the Afghanistan communities, you know, um, and at farm, you know, all the veterans that showed up, you know, um, and, and just, and all our art patrons, you know, from the Nasher, thank you. It was such an honor to be able to, to host and cook and, and um, even just seeing, you know, the, vi the videos and a film um, of, of all that, that happened. Um, our cooks, you know, got really nostalgic and they were like, we miss cooking. We miss Michael. <laughs> we miss, you know, all that. And um, what an incredible time to, to, you know, well, break bread with the communities and break down borders at the same time. So um, it, it was, um, yeah, a magical moment for sure. Yeah, and one of the things that I, I really appreciated about us working together was that, um, you know, I I always talk about myself when I talk about myself as an artist and people ask you to specify and, you know, are you a sculptor? Are you a painter? Yeah, what do you do exactly? I, yeah, <laughs> and this word social practice has entered into the fray 
you know, in the last two decades. And, and I always felt like the more accurate way for me to describe myself was site specific. Mm. Um, and to think about what it means to make something in a place and, and have it be for that place, like truly for that place. And it, almost if you were to take it away and just put it in another place, it wouldn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, and that allowed for me to be intentional. Um, and so I felt like our meeting was one that I was, I, I felt very grateful for and very, very honored to encounter you and wow. the incredible cooks would break bread, break borders, because it was a way of being site specific, yes. not just dropping in. Um, one of the things that I love about food and you can speak about your own artistic practice and how you come to food but um michael pollan writes about food like the history of cooking and the omnivore's dilemma and he makes it very clear that cities formed when humans decided to cook together mm -hmm. and i'm an artist who's also very interested in cities and it really felt like that that day we we made a city Yes. You know, and that city was a complex city, you know, like it was um, and and to think about the way that our our own hands in relationship to food were engaging with the hands of those veterans who have been engaged with what they call dirt therapy. Yes. Right. When they talk about the farming that they do. Um, yeah. So I just, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about all of that. And when I hear your your bio and think about you know, the way you came to cooking and, uh, you know, our mothers are also very present in our practices. So oh, for sure. yeah, I'd love, I'd love for, for people to hear how you came, how you came to this. Yeah. So, um, you know, today is actually the five year anniversary of my mother passing. And, um, and I was just thinking about, you know, where I was, you know, five years ago, um, at this time in the hospital, you know, bidding my goodbye um, to her and our families, you know, embracing her and and um, and just vowing to ourselves that, you know, her legacy must live on. And um, and so I'm really kind of get emotional here, just um, being here and talking about her. So her spirit, you know, lives on not only within me, but with all our community community cooks and with us talking about art and food and how it's such an incredible universal language and you know how we must learn how to speak it and to speak it better and so you know we can practice um kindness and compassion every day and um get the world to a better place you know and so that that's the thing it's it's you know for me making art was always about that, you know, about how um, my mom taught us to be, you know, good neighbors and, and do the right thing. And again, you know, um, practice kindness and compassion every day. And so when I started um, making art, it was always about my immigrant experience, that diaspora experience. I grew up in Taipei, Taiwan, and then came to the States by the, the way of um, Tulsa, Oklahoma. My aunt and uncle had actually um, started a, a restaurant business and they were basically doing a Chinese version of McDonald's and essentially, long story short, you know, they asked the family, you know, from Taiwan to come and help um, with the family business. And so 16 franchises later, you know, my parents purchased the location in, in Dallas and, and the franchise did rather well. And, you know, my mom used to basically, she was the chef of the kitchen and she would hire immigrants and refugees to come and cook, you know, for, um, our, our restaurant. And, um, and I just saw these opportunities that she provided for people and how transformative that was, you know, and, um, and I'm a descendant of, of refugees who escaped um, from China to take refuge in, in Taiwan. And so this subject matter is very deep and, and close to my heart. And, um, you know, so when I lost my mom to cancer, I really struggled with the grief and I wanted to, um, honestly, to, to, to heal. And, um, and I realized that, you know, in, in this process that I don't have to be selfish about it. I can, I can 
do this, you know, with the community and um, and find ways to um, to share food and share art and and um, and together we can heal as a community as one. And um, this barbecue that we threw together was the culmination of all those beautiful things coming together and um, was such a dream come true, you know, to to watch hundreds of people gather and and um, and just you know, really, really get the food and the music and the art and, and, you know, to be in that space together and, and understanding that, you know, there's more similarities about us than differences and what we celebrated together. Um, it was, it was incredible. So, um, I, I hope that my mom would be proud. I'm absolutely sure she is. And I am so, um, I'm really honored to be holding space with you tonight, you know. Um, well, thank you for uh, holding space for us. <laughs> yeah, so it, you know, it means, it means a lot to me to hear the way that, that you speak about it and also the way that, you know, even in, in our grief, we can find moments of, of, uh, of togetherness and, and renewal and continuation, right? Like the recipe becomes that. It becomes like a language and the way that you speak it, you know, the, the actual dialect is in how much, you know, how much baharat does my mother put in to something versus what, you know, I might find in a cookbook. Right. Um, to know that those variations occur across time. And so, you know, I can have Kuba, you know, an Iraqi mm -hmm. dumpling in a restaurant, but it won't it won't quite be mom's because no. you know the 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 uh, the alchemy is very right. particular. Yeah, we were we were, remember when we were talking, we were joking like how our, mom, our moms cooked. It's always a dash this and and a spread of that, and you just do it until it tastes right. And you're like, I don't know what that is. <laughs> But then, you know, by watching them, mimicking them, and you get to that certain spot, and, you know, and the ladies always kind of laugh at me about that, you know, because um, that's how they're teaching their children, you know, and, um, and, and it's like uh, through osmosis or something that, you know, some parts of that, that does happen. And, you know, and I love that, that, you know, we're, we're talking about it, and, you know, and passing the, the food and culture down. And that's the thing, it's like, that's something that, you know, people can never take away from us, you know, and, and, and that was something that, that, you know, when our community cooks, like, you know, Nawara Kulud and, and many others that, you know, when they're escaping war from, from Syria, that, you know, they weren't able to take, you know, their, um, you know, whatever um, identification, you know, what schooling they, they finished or, you know, what, was stores they they might have owned you know and and ran at the time but you know but the the ability to cook and the the skill to to you know to to love people uncond unconditionally and sharing that 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 form of art with people that they took everywhere you know um and it didn't matter that like especially with kulu like and you know she'll talk about this later but um uh, you know, just generations of that and, and, and being able to, you know, capture um, that, that synapses of, of, um, of, you know, what they hold together in their heart um, from, from their culture and their, their families and, and being able to, you know, share that with people and pass it down to different generations is, um, is, is, is amazing. So um, yeah, we, we, we love that, that how portable <laughs> this love is. Yeah, I really love that you're bringing up portability, you know, because it, it, it is so much um, in the language of diaspora, you know, that diaspora comes from the Greek of dia, cross and spirit and to scatter, you know, so to scatter across, I mean, this is what happens, you know, uh, through conditions that are often quite violent and not of our own making. You know, but that that refusal to interrupt those traditions that are that are embedded in us, you know, that we carry and archive 
in our bodies that can't be, um, or we resist having it be interrupted and being controlled and contained. You know, so as you move across borders, as you move across the world, this is what you can bring with you. And that was, you know, the story of how I got involved in, in working with food to begin with was um, finding this can of date syrup. Yeah. At, uh, <laughs> it's a hottie importing company. And mm-hmm. when I brought it up to the register, the owner looking at me and being like, oh, you're that guy. <laughs> I knew your grandparents, you know, and 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 that was the place my grandparents came to. They they went to Sahadi's in 1947 after they arrived in New York because they said, "Where do we get the spices?" Mm-hmm. You know, and it was a man from Syria who said, "This is where you get the spices." And if you want advice on where to get a house, I'll tell you also. You know, mm-hmm. so so it's like we find our people. Yep. Right. Yep. And um, and so, you know, I think I think it's 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 also such a beautiful story of intersection and intersectionality. Like when you talk about your relationship to your mother and the family's history of having to flee China to go to Taiwan, then to the United States, that one sees a reflection. It doesn't need to be a one to one ratio in the experience of people like Naura or Hulud, you know, that um, they carry with them, you know, a Syria that they had to leave. And that Syria is, you know, one that they will be able to transmit, you know, to their descendants. Mm -hmm. So we mourn the departure. But in those moments, we also have to find those opportunities to celebrate. Yes. And in in the tradition of like Iraqi cooking and Syrian cooking, oh, sure. sure Taiwanese, yeah. it's about plenty and bringing people together that one just doesn't enjoy it on it on their own. Mm-hmm. And it's never about scarcity. No. You know, and that's one of the things that I love about it as an art practice, because when it's about the food, I insist that it moves against this notion about uh, of scarcity and value. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And and, you know, and that's what I think has been so amazing um, in working with the ladies is that we work in this 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 notion of abundance. Right. Not only abundance that we never run out of food <laughs> for sure, um, you know, but the abundance of of love and and generosity and and kindness and compassion and, you know, after all that they'd been through, the war, the famine, the trauma, you know, to go through all those relocations and, you know, and, 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 and acquire, you know, five to seven different languages from different refugee camps throughout the world and, you know, and learn about adaptability and, and, and still have hope and, and so much grit and resilience and that that it's not just about survival instinct but like still the 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 idea how they can love more than ever after all that is like such an inspiration to me because you know i i i sometimes can be definitely the the glass is half full girl <laughs> <laughs> and you know, some of my friends joke like Jinya, sometimes you can't even find the glass and, and maybe that glass is like broken, you know, and we don't know how to glue it back together. <laughs> and um and you know, to to be surrounded, you know, with the ladies and and how they see the world and um and how they use food as this, you know, language and 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 form of art to like really um be able to like connect with um you know, not just, you know, the community near here, but also far away. And, you know, like last year we were actually accepted um, to uh, um, BBV at Compass, the Momentum program. And it was a, a incubator program that basically, you know, helped um, um, social enterprises talk about scaling and 
it was we were one of the cohorts in the U.S. and you know, um, but they had um, cohorts in in, in Turkey and uh, in Mexico and Spain where the bank was big and um, and we got to talk to other people who had you know um, launched similar programs you know with food and with refugees abroad, and um, but they they never had uh, they always had the business component but they never had the storytelling component and that's where we really prided ourselves in being unique in that way and and you know like you said it's 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 that ability to re still remember to celebrate you know and and the way the ladies celebrate their culture and and you know and still like and with that abundance and still like share it with with us and so many other people, you know, we work with a, a ton of, you know, churches and temples and mosques and, you know, a lot of different places, different places um, around. And, um, you know, it never ceases to amaze me when somebody, you know, comes up and, and asks, you know, the ladies, you know, how do you cook this and, and how do you do that? And, um, and the ladies would, would be like, why would a Jewish lady <laughs> be asking me about this? And, oh, I find out we use the same ingredients in this dish and this, that. And um, so I love the ideas that when we celebrate those things together. Yeah. And, and I think that, that that creation of a space and a platform where stories can be told, you know, where it's like the food is doing the talking, but also the people who make it um, are the hosts. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that that's an important part of what you're bringing up, which is, you know, we often have this paternalistic relationship of like, what it means for somebody to come from somewhere else, you know, to a host country. And there is a Palestinian architect that I admire a lot named Sandy Halal, mm -hmm. who talks about, you know, who has the right to host. Mm -hmm. And about the way that her work with refugees uh, and, and migrants in Sweden, um, like something amazing opened up for her when she saw what happened in the living rooms of a lot of these, these recently resettled people from Syria and from Iraq that all of a sudden they were in a position where they could host, you know, they had people from the Swedish government in their midst and they were no longer the guests and being able to have, you know, that agency open up where, where one is kind of, you know, given the, the place to not have everything done for them because they don't need everything done for them. Mm -hmm. You know, that this, um, there's a tendency to completely take away that sense of agency. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think that's one of the things that you're talking about with break bread, break borders that is so significant is that it, it interrupts that power dynamic and, and actually redirects it in a way where, yes, you're engaging with love, you're engaging with generosity, but it actually is a, a, a real, you know, transformation um of of relationships yeah they're in a place where like you said they're they're driving their lives and you know and for um for the ladies you know as wives as mothers as you know a member of the community they take pride in um, being able to earn a living and provide for their families and their children. They are the first ones, you know, to invest in the community that way and to empower them to, to, to do more, to, to step into that, that role is, you know, um, really you know thrusting them into the limelight not just to take the mic and you know tell their life stories right but um but to really be the ones that are you know driving um their lives and and where it goes next and you know and that's the thing it's like they don't want to take a, a handout they want to you know earn their own living and they want to work hard and you know be able to earn 
and their keeps and 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 that's the thing it's it's i love the fact that you know we we know that when we invest in women and girls you know how much that the community benefits you know from those kind of kinds of investment you know women will um invest um basically almost 90 percent of their income straight back into the communities whereas most you know men probably only do about 40 to 45 percent and so you know we we really want to encourage that right you know and to have those courageous conversations you know when we do the storytelling we're not just you know talking about food and culture we're really unpacking a lot of different things about you know what are the racial injustices that are happening you know um in in this world and you know um what is going on with gender um inequalities and and the pay gaps and and you know what are we doing you know to really um um, speak out against um, um, xenophobia, and um, those are a lot of the things that that we bring up in these um, safe spaces that we've created for for the women to you know to discuss with the world. And and you know it's not always rosy. You know, definitely people have come up and 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 said, you know, why are you here in America, and why are you taking good Americans' jobs? And um, um, you know, but after um, dining, um, on their beautiful food and, 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 um, and hearing their personal stories, um, it's difficult to hate somebody up close. And so, um, so it's about, um, you know, shifting those narratives, right. And, um, and, and we wanted to be able to, um, to empower the women to do that. Yeah. What you're saying is so amazing um, because, you know, so, so much of what can get lost in, in efforts like the ones that you and the amazing people at, at Break Bread, Break Borders are doing is like, you know, it's more than, than saying, well, here's my food, here's something about me. You're creating these moments of intimacy and proximity which is actually like a very spatial thing. You know, I see it as being, you know, very much about, about body work. I see it in relationship to sculpture. Um, it's what you're like, what you're building. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. But you too, I mean, you know, like you have a history of working with all different kinds of materials. And I know that when our friends are working on something, you know, it allows for our minds to do something else. And so, you know, creating moments like that where that's where that's occurring is is, you know, of course it's completely rare now. Um, you know, in this world that we're living in since March. But it's also something that doesn't need to be as rare, you know before it all happened and, and, and afterwards as well, you know, to be pushing against, you know, the atomization and this, the singular um, individual pleasures of eating, you know, the way that we've turned it into something that happens as a solo act, as opposed to something, you know, that happens with a family, an extended family, a community, a city. Mm -hmm. you know, so that that's part of, the way that I perceive the work that you all are doing. Mm -hmm. And to think about, you know, like, you know, that, that opening question that Catherine asked, like, how are you? <laughs> you know, oh. it's like, how long do you have? Right. And, <laughs> and I think about, you know, like, okay, engaging like this on Zoom, um, you know, teaching on Zoom, meeting on Zoom, um, you know, like it really, if we thought we were going to have a lot of time on our hands, you know, then we had another thing coming because so much was expected to be able to happen now that everybody had this time on their hands. Mm -hmm. um, and what I found was, you know, in the first months of the lockdown, um, I, I was so exhausted yeah. to the point of being close to tears, you know, with the constant engagement 
that the one thing that I asked for my family was that I be allowed to do the cooking every night mm. um, for my wife and my two kids because it is an act of care, but it was also an act that was speechless. It allowed me to do something that wasn't about speaking. Like I was communicating to them through, you know, what I was putting into the food. It's your therapy. Uh, your therapy. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It's incredibly therapeutic. Yeah. How, how did that work for you and your son, you know, who I believe is 11, right? He actually just turned 13. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> Michael, I've managed to keep a human being alive for 13 years. Can you believe it? <laughs> no, that, that's, I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think the funny thing was, you know, not being able to um, find a lot of stuff in, in grocery stores and, and, you know, and that, you know, the, the laziness in me uh, had to kick into, you know, a super mom drive and, um, you know, roll my own dumpling dough and, you know, and things like that, that, you know, that I just kind of took her for granted because, you know, um, have a full-time gig and, and, you know, and, and working, um, with break, break, break borders and, um, and, you know, trying to be a single mom and, and, and the best that I know how, and all those different things combined and, and just figuring out, you know, there's never a balance, right. There's, there's only like a mix, and, and trying to figure out how to do that mix, you know, well. And, um, and so just, you know, making a lot of stuff and failing a lot at it and <laughs> falling on my face uh, constantly. But, you know, whenever um, things, you know, went right, it was kind of like, oh, you know, okay, you know, this, this, this is how, you know, my mom would have made it and, you know, and, and made the world so much better because it tastes better. And, you know, cause, cause it's handmade. And, um, and I remember, um, you know, getting Lang to, um, <laughs> to jump in to, to roll the, the dough one day himself. And he was like, oh, mommy, this is way too much work. <laughs> you know, he was like, I, I really didn't realize just how much you pour into this, you know? And he's like, my muscles, like my, and I was like, yeah, put some more elbow, elbow grease into it. And he's like, that hurts. <laughs> And, um, you know, and I, I think that was the thing. It's like, you know, if he's realizing that at 13, like, thank God, you know, because I think I didn't realize so much of this stuff until I was like 30 with my mom, you know. And so, you know, if it, it, it's trying to look at like some of the silver linings, you know, through these challenges throughout the dependent pandemic, right? You know, it's like the, the, the times that we got to really like spend together and, you know, and, and talk about, um, you know, when we watch an anime together, you know, what do we like about the drawings and, you know, what, what, what do we like about, you know, how this, you know, director does things and, you know, and, and those things, you know, um, uh, just get, it, it really makes you appreciate it on a different level. Yeah. Yeah. And, and just this, you know, like if I think about the expanse of time, you know, we were joking before that, you know, that, that, that the time, you know, between now and when we gathered in February may as well be a decade. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really made me think about, uh, about the function of time and waiting in, in relationship to, to food analogies and, um, and just this idea that, uh, that the work that we're doing right now that we don't know that we're doing you know, is hopefully, you know, enzymatic work, you know, that we're like these enzymes that over time is slowly changing protein. Like in this moment, you know, maybe it's like we're spoiled milk, but eventually we're going to be cheese, you know? Um, that yeast that's going to make the bread even better. It's right, <laughs> right. Or, or wine, right? You know? Yeah. Um, you know, but, but I think about it also in relationship to, you know, what we're talking about with, with people like uh, Naura and Khulud that, mm -hmm. you know, that this, that they're, they're connected to communities that are like also waiting um, in triplicate, you know, there's the waiting uh, that, that happens as a result of the pandemic, but also waiting 
through the Civil War and waiting for justice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I there's an artist who I, I adore um, uh, named Ika Hajduk, who mm -hmm. uh, talks about the cruelty of waiting. Mm -hmm. um, and to think about that function of, of waiting in, in our lives right now. And, and obviously, I think that's something that probably Naura and Khulud can speak to more directly, but mm -hmm. it's something that's coming up, you know, because patience is really required in a lot of the food that we cook. Um, and, and so, you know, I think about the people that have taken on sourdough baking. You hear about all these people who never cooked right. before that started taking up cooking mm -hmm. because they had the time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but, but what seems is like this luxury of time for us, you know, in a place like the U.S. and thinking about the way that that time has been burdened on people elsewhere, you know, for, for many, many years. And on top of that, there's a pandemic and, and the cruelty of that time. Mm -hmm. But, you know, that's the thing, right? Like, we talk about the expense of time and how, you know, on the one hand, it's like, you know, when we have been celebrating these, you know, food memories and, and how powerful these food memories are and, you know, and how timeless they are. Like, you know, regardless of how people consume food now, um, you know, not being able to be in a group in the community to dine together and things like that. But, you know, but those memories are still there. You know, you still remember, you know, the first time that you, you know, bite into a, 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 a date or a pomegranate or, you know, whatever um, it is that, that, you know, what that tastes like. And, you know, you can draw up on that and still, you know, that there's something timeless about that. And, and, you know, that will forever live in us and, you know, and we'll kind of, you know, shift and, and maybe, you know, pivot however we will um, into whatever that looks like, you know, when people dine together, you know, um, in the near future or, 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 you know, to that extent of different time frame, but, you know, but for, for the ladies, I, I feel like, you know, there's a different um, sense of that, that time of how it's applied. And, you know, they'll obviously um, speak to this, but, you know, they're just so much more patient and, and, you know, about that kind of um, time. And, and, you know, and the thing is the the cruelty of waiting is almost a, a testament of the, the resilience of their grit and, and, you know, to them, it's making them better. It's not, a cruelty of time, but a, a blessing from above. And, and I just, I still have to get there. <laughs> um, but, um, but I think, um, but I think that's the thing about, um, about how um, this is, you know, being viewed, like, you know, we definitely had to like pivot and, you know, uh, when the pandemic hit, like uh, our catering was shut down and, and, you know, we had to shift very fast, you know, as a social enterprise, you know, try to work with NGOs and, and government agencies and, you know, foundations, you know, who were, um, you know, sharing COVID relief um, aid and, um, and trying to get that funding to the ladies. And so they didn't have, you know, um, any issues. And, and, you know, we were talking about, you know, procurement of, you know, housing and making sure that utilities were paid and, you know, any, you know, um, uh, food and medical bills that we were able, you know, we, we wanted to be able to get in and, and, and help as, as much as we can. And then, you know, we were also, um, you know, making sure that, you know, they still had the opportunity to safely speak to people. And so you know, they never stopped um, educating um, people from, you um, from Zoom, and so that time was spent um, really kind of shifting gears for us, like one to triage, you know, the the 
the problems, you know, from, from our end. And for them, it's kind of like, you know, we still wanted to keep them safe and, um, and healthy. And so no one was cooking in a commercial kitchen. But, you know, but they were still talking about their food and, you know, educating people about their culture. And so, you know, whether it's, you know, um, adults or, you know, students at schools and, and, you know, from, you know, high school to college. And, you know, we even had um, a, a, this uh, MBA program that reached out to us from Portugal that was, you know, doing research about working with um, um, the refugees, you know, in, in their city, in their country, and, and trying to help, help help them shift that narrative of, you know, um, expanding a, a restaurant's theory of, you know, we're not just going to cook this food, but we're going to like share out the, the, the culture. And, and so, it is literally near and far. And, you know, and so we, we were still training them, you know, um, uh, with all the licenses and, and certifications, you know, with their, um, uh, with their food manager training. And so, you know, that can be done digitally and, you know, that can be done safely. And, you know, and we asked them what they wanted and they said, you know, okay, we, our families, you know, are, are, you know, some have, you know, underlying health conditions and we, we need to stay home. And we respected that. We didn't force them to go out and cook. And, you know, we, we didn't say you have to do this. We, we, we asked, you know, what would you like? And, and very much as us as social practice artists that, you know, when our community asks for fire, we don't bring them water. Right. And so, you know, so that that kind of feedback and dialogue, you know, continued and it, it still does today. And, um, and, you know, and we're, we've been very fortunate that, you know, a lot of um, people stepped in and to, you know, to, to help us in these endeavors and, and, you know, and even uh, now, I mean, you know, the Nasher um, providing this opportunity for us to have these dialogues, to have these courageous conversations, to bring these things out to light, you know, because the, the, you know, the, this vulnerable population, like, you know, we're, we're not just making art for us, we're making art for the communities to understand that, that, you know, it's, it's, it's beyond me. It's it's about we and, you know, and how when we lift our neighbors, we're lifting ourselves. And so it's it's trying to figure those things out, you know, and um, and to continue to have those conversations. So it's it's not just, you know, well, that's a third world problem. Well, that happens somewhere else, but it's happening in our backyard and we have to do this and we have to do it right. Yeah, I wonder if it might be a nice time to um, bring Claude and Navarra into the conversation. Um, I think it'd be lovely to hear from hear from them as well. And if I'm not mistaken, um, both of them were participating in the in the, in the barbecue in February as well. So, absolutely. Yep. Yes. Here we are. Hello. Masters. Hi. 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 <laughs> yeah, it was a great opportunity to to do the barbecue party. Yes. For the day's event, and we miss it a lot. Inshallah, we'll be together again. Yeah, yeah, we, we hope that it would be rebated. <laughs> yeah. Inshallah. Yes, many times after the pandemic. Actually, Actually we, we gained we from uh, this event a lot of experience. Yeah, and we contact a lot of people, and uh, maybe, and every time we when we serve our food and the people like it, uh, actually we we maybe we gained a lot of trust and uh, maybe more um, uh, maybe we, we we have to be more professional and uh, patient for our job. And and what has it been like uh, during the pandemic for you? Like, what what do you find yourself cooking um, for yourselves? Mm -hmm. what, what what is what's bringing you pleasure? pleasure. 
Mm. Actually, for me, it was uh, the last ma uh, 10 months, it was hard for all people and for my family, for everyone, I think. But uh, we still uh, cooking at home <laughs> with my family and uh, uh, and if everyone need any food or if it's a small order, it's okay or I don't, maybe. But uh, everything maybe or all the hard time. Last Friday, I, I have or I had uh, a great thing for me. My oldest uh, daughter, she gradu graduated from high school. Yeah, and I was very, very uh, happy. Oh, my See God. what I mean? Mashallah, they mashallah. Yeah, they yeah. find silver yeah. lining and everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so, um, uh, with Noara, um, because her oldest daughter, Lean, actually has um, uh, diabetes, diabetes, type one, type one diabetes, and and um, you know, as a child, she really struggled with this, and and so because yeah. of her underlying health conditions, you know, they really yeah. had to be careful, yeah. and. Yeah. Um, so Noara was very adamant about, you know, um, every, you know, keeping her and her family and the team at BBBB, the community cooks safe and, um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, what the best way to go about that was. And, um, and there's actually another cook, um, you know, that, um, her husband actually is, um, in the hospital right now he's done with COVID. And so, you know, the ladies have already realized, um, you know, who's going to cook and do a porch drop off contactless delivery, of course, you know, and, um, but, you know, just us, you know, trying to figure out, you know, how to get that assistance around. And, um, but yeah, they, they have been really supporting themselves, you know, um, with the, with, um, with their neighbors and with the community and, mm -hmm. um, and really like, you know, um, there, there are a ton of different people, um, uh, Toyota's uh, sustainability program actually uh, was working with a farmer called Growth Texas, and they were delivering fresh produce, you know, to different people, and um, and they um, definitely had um, a, a you know a group of um, uh, drop offs, you know, that was set up um, for our community cooks, and you know, um, Noara, you know, safely, um, you know, was um, delivering all this, you know, with um, Kulud and, and everybody else and, you know, helping to get that fresh produce throughout the communities and people who were food insecure and didn't have access, you know, to those kind of fresh vegetables and things like that to stay healthy. And so, like, they never stopped <laughs> yeah. about other people. I'm just saying, yeah. like, they, you know, like yeah. they, they were in all this, but they never yeah. stopped thinking about other people. And that, mm -hmm. like, I, uh, yeah. I, I, yes. I actually, actually, we hope uh, the pandemic goes quickly and resume the work. Amazing. Inshallah, you know, it, it, it really, you know, like we, when we talk about what, what, I mean, even just the title of the program of Break Bread, Break Borders, um, you know, to hear you all talking about your ability to see things, even in the city that you're in, about thinking about food apartheid, food insecurity, um, being very conscious of that, and it being about, once again, exploring that root of love and care where you create plenty. You know, it's not just enough. It's it's about it's about like you said before, Jinya, abundance. Because I mean, I know that I could probably ask this of Kulud that like you always have to make more than 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 the guests that you expect that you're going to have, right? You always have to make with oh my God, too much. Yes, yeah. sure, yeah. And also, I I have to add something because of the pandemic and the quarantine. And we, we were like used to meet all the cooks. So we had like a group on Facebook 
and a group on WhatsApp so we can communicate every day. And we have these chats. Sometimes it lasts for two or three hours, like a video chat. Yeah, we were like a, a support group to help each other to, to go through the hard times during the pandemic too. I love that. I love those. It really got me through a lot hearing from everybody. You know, that was definitely my lifeline. I would have never made it without your sisterhood. I just. Oh, thank you, Gina. Thank you. I love you. So we can't make it through without you, too. Yeah, without you, yeah. And, and maybe it is great uh, to have uh, people uh, support you or it's like ideal for you. It's like Jinya is uh, to stand a lot of with us with this pandemic and a lot of people. Yes, she helped us in everything. I just talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Don't worry. Talking is an invitation. Yeah. Uh, like it. It's um. It, I I think about what you said before, Genia, about the kitchen and the safe space of the kitchen, and thinking about you know the way that it is a confessional space that that things can be said but also um you know that it just it, it it is where people do feel like the warmth and and a lot of the you know the care um and and to realize that 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 what happens in there you know there's there's w ways that i come to the kitchen you know in my own life um you know and and not being expected, you know, by by Iraqi tradition to be the one that's making the food because the kitchen is also a gendered space traditionally. Um, but for me, that was where that was where culture was held. You know, that was where our songs were being sung. It was where the gossip was happening. It was where the jokes were being told. It was where the secrets were being told. You know, so that that. That to me is also, you know, like I feel all of that as you all are speaking is like you're you're extending that space of the kitchen in a way, you know, recognizing the fact that it a lot of what you're doing is about hosting. But I just wanted to make room to think about that, of what it means to have that space where the hosts are making the food and the kind of social space that that becomes. Yeah, one meal at a time. <laughs> I've just uh, gotten a message where I have already um, approached the end of our hour. And um, this has been a really incredible experience. And it's been wonderful to see all of you. Um, thank you so much, um, Jinya. Food, Nara, Michael, for joining us virtually this evening, and I hope we can do this in person very soon. We hope so too. Thank you for this space. Yeah, inshallah. Yeah, it was inshallah. nice to see everybody to catch up. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sending you love, love. y'all. All right. Islamu. Asha. <laughs> 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 <laughs>